Welcome to today's episode. All right, ladies, I am so excited and honored to have today's guest join us today and share her story. I believe it is so inspiring and empowering, and I know you guys are going to be blown away. I've been following her story on Instagram, and I thought, her story needs to be shared. It is very, very powerful from what I've seen. And I'm excited to hear more in depth. So why did we just jump on over? Billy Steele, I want to just, I'm so honored that you're here. Thank you for agreeing to do this with me. Uh, somebody you probably weren't even uh, aware was following your story. And uh, <laughs> so happy to have you here. Where we're about to you just give a little introduction. Where are you from? Hi, Kathy. Um, thank you for that beautiful introduction. I'm from Australia, um, New South Wales, on the coast in Newcastle. So who, most people, when you say Sydney, they get more of an idea. So, yeah, beautiful place in Australia. Amazing. Amazing. I'm so excited. All right, let me make sure my sound is up so we are not going to miss any of this. Okay, perfect. Well, Billy, I'm just going to jump right in if you don't mind. I'd like to hear a little bit more about what were you struggling with or what were the problems that you were struggling with before you decided to work on achieving your recent or your, your current results? So the, the problems I was struggling with Mainly, I'd gained a lot of weight um, during menopause. And um, believe it or not, I really didn't know that was the reason why I was uh, gaining weight. I kind of, when I, when, you know, years later, I kind of felt like, you know, those stories where you hear women didn't know they were pregnant until they gave birth in a toilet. Um, but I kind of, it kind of felt like that. And I'd put on loads of weight. I started drinking during COVID, during the lockdowns and um, was really quite unhealthy and overweight and dissatisfied with both the health and the aesthetic of my body. So I joined a challenge, a 12-week weight loss challenge at a local gym and had to get all these scans done and body scans, body composition scans. And while I, I got that done, I got some health stuff done as well, bone density and things like that, got the reports back, a host of things. This is how much body fat you got, which was blown me away. It's funny, you know you're big, you know you're overweight, but when you get physical data in front of you, it somehow consolidates and clicks everything in. And then the doctor says, look, you're pre-diabetic. And I was like, what do you mean? And he said, if you don't start to make some um, lifestyle changes, you will end up with chronic disease. So that, Kathy, that was mm. the, the pivotal moment when I thought, hang on, this is going to go really bad really quickly if I don't seriously start to make some changes. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah to, to hear that, like you're saying, I, and I, and I understand that power of, getting the results. Like when we think we have some issues or we're dealing with some struggles, we don't know until we really get that research done and look at it in black and white. And it's, it's definitely, it can be a wake up call. So when it about was. When was that you, you mentioned, so COVID, was it after COVID? Um, when I started, so it was 2021. Mm -hmm. So look, there's a, there's a lot, there's a lot that happened before that. I was, I, I went through a very, very, dark period where I wanted to take my own life like I had put plans in place to do that and if I talk too much about it I'll get really emotional because that's all it needs that's how awful it was so I checked myself into a rehab in Sydney um, for where I was diagnosed with childhood adult trauma and um, clinical depression and so I spent three weeks there and if I hadn't I wouldn't be here now that's that's the absolute truth so um yeah and then COVID hit and then um I was put on Lexapro and that started to even things out a bit and then COVID hit and I was drinking in addition to having the medication and it was it was also a recipe for disaster but I never went back to that very dark place um, so yeah, it's all a bit muddled, <laughs> um, but that's, you know, they're the sequence of events and, and that's what happened. So, um, so 2021 was when I got the pre-diabetic 
thing and I joined that challenge. Yeah, that's and and thank you for sharing. I, I can't that's even okay. just amazing to to know you've come through from so many, so many uh struggles and challenges. And I again I I'm I'm just I'm amazed. So I'm very, very happy to hear that things things worked in your the right direction in your favor. So you. glad that that all worked out. Um what so so that would you say the doctor's um health this the the scares that he gave you was that that line in the sand or what was that line in the sand where you thought this is it I'm I'm done yeah if I yeah yeah if, if to, for the for the sake of clarity absolutely that was that was it um and that sort of created this um schematic kind of thing for benchmark or however you call it yeah to start to um you know get the get the wheels of change going um and yeah, yeah. I mean, there were lots of other things like very, very um, a huge dissatisfaction with the way I looked, with the way I felt. And I had other health issues. I, my blood pressure was high. I was overweight to the point of um, discomfort uh, laying in bed. I, I, I said in one of my videos, my the top of my menopause belly when I laid on my side used to rest on the top of my legs. And I remember saying, I can't believe that I have let myself get like this. I can't believe that I'm unhealthy and that I actually look really bad as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, I'm not ashamed to say I care about what I look like. Um, I do care. Um, and it makes me, it feels, it makes me feel happy when I look good. It makes me feel good when I look good. So um, being like that, and then it just, there's a snowball effect when you feel shit about yourself. You start, you stop doing it, getting your hair done. You stop you, you, um, looking after your skin. You stop getting your nails done or whatever you previously did. And I stopped all of that. Some of my videos, I had didn't go to the hairdressers for two years. Wow. Before that, I went every six weeks. Wow. So just a, so, the, the, the culmination of everything, of just not feeling good about where you were. Um, and I, and I know that there's so many, so many women that can relate because at this stage of life, things do shift so dramatically. And, you know, not to mention if there were other challenges and struggles and emotional uh, hurdles that they're going through. I mean, obviously it's all culminated at this stage of life. So, wow. Yeah. I, I de definitely understand that and, and not, not prioritizing you because of where you're not feeling like doing anything at that point yeah mm -hmm. and just that no no self-care which is you mm -hmm. know a byproduct of no self-respect and um you know I didn't feel sexy and I didn't feel like a good mother and I didn't I felt unworthy I felt worthless really um that that I my expiration date was up that I wasn't I was big I was fading into a world of you know, there's, there's, there's such a an obsession with youth, which is then, you know, youth and beauty and all this kind of stuff. And I just was drowning. I was drowning in it all. And I couldn't see it. I couldn't find a place for myself in the world. So I just gave up. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's, it's a, it's a common um, thing. And I, I, I know that that is, that's a shame because as women of this stage, we've come through some major major challenges in our life and we deserve to be treated and treat ourselves a lot better and, and believe that we can. So hopefully this is going to help turn the page for someone that's watching or uh, just, just to start to change that. that I hope so. Yeah. Same here. Yeah. So before, before we jump into what, what you ended up doing from that point, were, mm -hmm. had you tried anything in the past that didn't really work for you or like challenges of trying to to take care of yourself or prioritize your health or was that never an issue until midlife it was never really an issue oh, okay. but um my relationship with food has always been extremely dysfunctional mm -hmm. i remember with girlfriends uh you know sleepovers pajama parties whatever they call them uh you know yeah what what were those pills called um they're like a um, oh, I can't even remember. They suppressed your appetite. Okay. So we would take those and we would take, they were, they were called Ford pills in Australia, but they were laxatives. 
Okay. So yeah, we yeah. take that and laxatives and we would just run around, exercise and just be obsessed with being thin, loads and loads of cardio. As I got older, binge eating, um, throwing up, bulimia, um, you know, just anything to be thin because if you were thin, well, then you were beautiful. That's that's where I grew up. That's the landscape that I grew up in and it's been a dysfunctional relationship with food pretty much since I was a teenager. I definitely relate with that. I mean, that was, yeah. that was just shouted from every um, every building, every TV, every magazine. It was just all about that. So yes, I understand that. And so, I also think, mm-hmm. sorry for interrupting no, no. you. I also remember I was talking to my sister about this not that long ago. We were... We were pitted against each other, my sister and I, and our parents didn't know that that was going to be a problem. They they would dress up, dress us up to look pretty. You know, we were you always as a woman, you always had to look pretty, and the prettiest girl had the most love, had the most affection, had the most attention. They were the best. The prettiest mm-hmm. girl was the best, and that's the way. That's the the dialogue and that's the landscape that I grew up in in the competition between mm-hmm. my sister and I and between as we, you know, as we got older, cl- female classmates and friends and it was fierce and it was very hard to develop nice, close, uh, meaningful, respectful relationships for me with other women because I felt this perpetual competition and it was foul and I and looking back now, um, I absolutely, I'm so glad that I'm not like that anymore. Yes, yes, definitely. That that all needs to just completely be washed away. I I yeah. completely understand that. And yeah, I think mm-hmm. we're we're done with that. We're done with that. Yeah, thank God. New chapter. <laughs> so Billy, <laughs> yeah, I know. Let's just move yeah. on, move on. <laughs> so now the question is: all right, so she's done with it. She's drew draw this line in the sand have heard the scary facts from the doctor, really just not happy with where she's at. What did you decide to do? And just take us with you on that journey of what changed Mm -hmm. really. So I'll just mention, I tried at least two challenges before this one, got all the paperwork, told them my super unrealistic goals, paid all the stuff, got all the supplements, told everybody I know, did it for a week. Nah, nah, not going to do it. So the two previous times to this one. So the difference with this one, I don't think I told hardly anybody. I didn't go out and buy any supplements. I didn't go out and buy exercise equipment or I just quietly walked into what I can now say was a successful endeavour kind of already with my head low expecting to kind of fail because I had in the past. Mm -hmm. So did start of the challenge, uh, told them the nice unrealistic goal that I had 12 weeks. I want to lose 22 kilos. That's what I told them. So they use that data. They don't know you. They're only, only basing it on what you, um, your weight, your height, your goal um, and the diet, I guess the food, the food. And so they give you an eating plan, which was, uh, minus like was like 15 1600 calories um and a exercise plan so a weightlifting plan a resistance training printed it out i've never done it before ever so i've made loads of posts about this I, I printed it out wrote this stuff on it sat in my car be, like before the first time and i was just like coming bloody hell what am i doing like and just started crying I was thinking, I can't do this. I'm so embarrassed. I had this ratty grey shirt on with food stains on it. My boobs are out here, like so overweight. My hair's all messy and just my face is all red from being overweight, from alcohol and from crying. And I just thought, what are you going to do? Like if this is it. If you don't start doing something, there has to be the beginning the pivotal point of change, and this was it. It was either I'm going in or I'm just going to 
have a really, really unhealthy, sad life. So it was one of the hardest things I did. Went into the gym with a piece of paper, sort of loaded the staff, went to the equipment, just had no idea. So just went on the treadmill, did that bike stuff I knew how to work for a while, then got a bit more confidence, then tried all pinned machines, tried the pinned machines, um, and then that's what I did. I just slowly got braver and braver, taught myself how to use this stuff and quickly realised in regards to the eating that that those amount of calories were not going to cut it. It was nowhere near enough and it's the first time ever in my entire life that I took an intellectual approach to eating and started to see, monitor how my body reacted to the food, monitor how my mind reacted to the food and started to eat enough food for my body. First time ever, ever. So that's how it started and I just kept at it. I just kept going and I was still obsessive. I was still weighing myself many, many times a day. My mind was still very sketchy dysfunctional but it was changing really really slowly these tiny little incremental changes were happening and that's why I made the videos because I thought I am going to forget how I feel today I am going to forget this and you need to document you need something that is going to be your best friend and your biggest support in this journey and that's yourself because you can tell a million people and they can have the best intentions and they can be super supportive, but they're not going to run into your bedroom at five o'clock in the morning and punch you in the head and make you get up and go to the gym or slap cake out of your mouth. You have to do it yourself. And the minute you realise that is the minute you can lay down some serious plans, long-term plans, short-term, mid-term to make changes if you don't take the responsibility for it, you just not you're just gonna fail. Yeah. So that's that's what happened. You said some very powerful, powerful things throughout that. And I and I just I, I find it so that and I know that that's what is so inspiring about you is that you decided uh, and I know you had gone through some very, you know, you shared the low points that you had been through before that, but to be at that point where you knew I, I either do this now or that's it. Like I have to get up and do this. That is where I find most women just get stuck because the fear, you know, what are people going to think of me for you to be able to go into the gym, do the things. And then at the same time, just keep going, even though you didn't really know what, what you didn't have anybody walking with you. You were doing this yeah. on your own. You were learning. You were and and I wonder if that also gives a little bit extra, uh, just just that extra push because now you, like you're saying, I'm responsible for my results. I'm responsible for getting myself up and doing the things. Nobody else is responsible. I can't blame anybody else because it's it's on me. Yeah. And then the foods to eat in that much of a deficit is not going to help the results because it's just moving downward. So was that something that you were studying? Like what what helped you know? how to start the training and how to increase the foods. Was there any uh, resources or different avenues that helped you kind of learn where, where to start? So where I started, I, I based it on my, um, my own beliefs mm -hmm. about food and my own beliefs about food is to eat as natural as possible. That makes the most sense to me. So I thought, let's try it. Mm -hmm. Let's try it. And I didn't, don't mean go out, I went out and bought all these whole foods and then I was set. I mean take away a bit of the shitty food, introduce a little bit mm -hmm. of the better food and it was a slow, slow process. Oh, I don't like that. Well, what can you substitute that for that you do like? And that, that And it was an experiment and I'm still experimenting. So I got to a point, I've gotten to a point where I created such an unbelievably powerful baseline that I now know when I introduce more of something or a brand new food, I can tell the impact that it has on my body. 
I know what generally will happen if I eat a little bit more steak or if I have a, a bit more carbs or, and I think that that's, that is one of the best things I've done is to be patient enough to eat the same thing for a period of time to give yourself that unique baseline because everyone's different that gives you optimal health. And what I mean by that is mood's good, sleep's good, energy's good. You can still fully participate in life, be in a deficit, do your workouts, go out with your friends and not be, oh, my God, what's going to be on the menu? Oh, I've been invited to a wedding, I can't go. Life goes on, yeah, and if you don't create that beautiful safety net, engineer your life in a way that you can still adhere to this deficit and this this um, eating program, you will fail because you can't just withdraw out of life and do this and then come back, and that's where people fail because they think that, they're going to be in this little, you know, this little kind of land, fantasy land on their own and they're not going to have to deal with anything else. You do. Life goes on. And if you, your partner's angry with you or your kids, they don't give a shit if you're hungry. You know, <laughs> they don't care. That's what I mean. And it's so complex and change is hard and all that. But I think I've um, I've digressed a bit. No, I, I think yeah. that's wonderful. Yes. You, you've treated yourself like a science, a research project or a science experiment in, in learning as you go. And yeah. that's perfect. Yeah. yeah. Because I, I thought if uh, someone offered me X amount of money to have optimal health for the rest of my life and to look a certain way and have a certain amount of strength, I'd make that investment. Well, I can't afford that. But what I can afford is the time spent on myself. I'm going to do it because what's more worth it? You know, what's what's more important than life? And we all have this in common, whether you're rich, poor, whatever, is good health. You can enjoy nothing without it. So why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you experiment for that X amount of time and give yourself every chance? Yes. Hundred percent. Can't you guys see how I, I had to ask this this amazing, inspiring? St I needed the story. I think it was just <laughs> a, more than I expected, Billy. I, I love I love how you did that, and I find there's so much to that because of the what we're taught, what we're taught how to lose weight, how to you know what women should look like, and all that you know crap that we fall into and we think is true, and it's not. But you were able to see that for yourself. Say that's it, and then just move forward and and take action and not give up you know and, and this yeah. the results speak for themselves do you mind sharing your results like where you were when you first started to where you're at now um okay so look I was all the posts that I have are at 78 kilos I was bigger than that but I don't have any photos okay. because I was too embarrassed excuse mm -hmm. me and that was before I started on the challenge I probably got to about 82 excuse me, or 83. Um, but at the challenge, I was around 78. So obviously I wanted to lose fat. The building muscle stuff, I didn't know. I had done a little bit of research and I was really interested in the concept of the bone density and how, you know, how our muscles, particularly for women, um, degenerate. And I thought that that was something that the weights would help me with. Um, I was a little bit clueless as to, this beautiful body composition that can result from that. I was clueless to how do I balance so well? Like how is my balance so much better? How is my flexibility so much better? And even my memory got better. I don't know how. Um, my cellulite started to disappear. I've been accused of so many things. Where, wh What have you done? How has your cellulite gone? Man, I don't know. It just has. It hasn't gone, but it's diminished sig significantly. I didn't know that would happen. Um, lifting weights was like me finding the promised land. was like the Wizard of Oz giving me my wish. It is phenomenal, the results from that. So muscle gains, yeah, 78 kilos. I'm 160 centimetres tall. So um, 
I was body fat. I don't know about the body fat. It was pretty high. It was like 36% or something like that when I started 38%. Um, I haven't, I don't know the, the body fat now, but yeah, just um, size 16 in Australia. Um, I fit into my daughter's some of size six. Wow. Um, just wow. my body, just the, the, the tone and, and yeah. how muscular it's looking. And um, the strength that I've got is crazy. I just, I couldn't believe it was happening and I couldn't believe it was happening at my age. I'm 51. Mm-hmm. Um, and also just that euphoria you get when you lift weights. I've experienced with no, no other sport I've ever done. I just feel reborn. It sounds weird. Every time I have a have a session, it's like, it's like I forget what it was like and I go, man, <laughs> this was good. This is so unbelievable. Why wasn't I doing this when I was in the womb? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Yes, your energy is infectious, but I understand 100%. That feeling is just such that there's nothing like it. And until you experience it for yourself, you can't you can't even understand. Uh, but yeah. yeah, it takes time. It takes time in that that. Mm-hmm. It feeling to, to feel the confidence and, and to start to build that strength, but it's, it's definitely a high. Um, so now with where you're at, I'm 51 too, by the way. So we're exactly the same age. It's so cool. Perfect. Um, yeah. And your first, when you were explaining where you were before and just that, that middle section and just mm-hmm. being just where it was, um, have you been able to, this is like the question that everybody wants to know how, <laughs> Where is is the midsection? What you all what it what you were looking for? Was it is it all there? Where you the goals that you were looking for? Uh, tell you mean what it looks like? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've almost got a six pack. Yeah, um, my obliques are beautiful. Um, and you know, people say you can, obviously you can't spot you can't spot train fat. No, um, no. but the the importance of having that beautiful strong core I explained it to my daughter and she's lost a bunch of weight too and is looking fantastic I said imagine standing there and having these two beautiful big hands come around you and say I've got you I've got you through your life and you'll be okay you know you won't fall that's what having to me is the purpose of a strong core it holds everything together and yeah abs are great and yeah they're sexy and all that but that core that support for your body, for your frame and your posture and all that. Look, I can't talk about it enough. I've never had abs like this in the way I walk. I walk differently the way I do everything because my core is so strong. So, yeah, it looks cool. It's um, My belly's almost gone. Um, my waist is tiny now, like smaller than when I was in my 20s. So it's possible, ladies. It is not, it, it, it's not a lie. <laughs> it doesn't matter. You know what? And it's. It's not even, I was talking to a friend about this. It's not even close to being impossible. You know what I mean? Like it's not, oh, God, I've got to go hours at the gym and I've got to eat, a, you know, a carrot. It's it's totally doable. It's just consistently and 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 um, do it smart, like have, have a good program. Yes. It's You know what I mean? It's, yep. it's just mm-hmm. so not even close to being impossible. It's, it's smarter, not harder. You don't have to over you don't have to follow the extremes. And I think that's where most people are stuck because the extremes that were shared before and they've failed multiple times because they just don't, they're not sustainable. They're not, they're not possible to live on, but in their minds, that's how you get the results. And like you just yeah. shared, it is not about that. It is about following yeah. the right system, following it, getting enough of the nutrition, the right nutrition, knowing your body uh, and, and being okay with it taking a while. Right. So how, oh. how did that take that transformation from where you started till now? Like, was it like a two and a half years, time? two and a half years? So, so Yeah. Two and a half years so far. Yeah. Um, and it's, I'm still going, like I still have a, a idea in my head of um, what I want to look like and also an idea of my strengths. Um, I don't want to be like, I've, I'm getting quite muscular. This is probably going to be it for my upper body. Mm-hmm. Um, who would have ever thought I'd say that? Oh, I don't want to be any more muscular. You know what I mean? That's crazy yeah. talk for someone over 50, a woman over 50. And just, you know, just fine tuning it now. And, you know, to have that, to, to be, have that um, choice to fine tune your body, like, come on. <laughs> it it yeah, impacts everything. Um, yeah. Sorry? 
I says it impacts everything in life, right? It just continues. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. So yeah, it's um, it's just it's just that and that and building that beautiful muscle and um, you know, taking care of my bones and you know all my systems and everything's changed. My skin's changed. My um, you know, I had a, I got a glimpse of my back and my back muscles and and you know carrying my groceries from the car and I can't wait to pick my grandchildren up when they're born. Um, it's and leaving that legacy for my kids. My kids have completely changed the way they live their lives. And I have, you know, I don't say to them, "You eat this, you do this." They've watched me, and they are doing. They've seen the results, and they are doing what I'm doing, and their lives have improved so much and that's probably the best outcome to what I'm doing 100% yes it's one thing to tell someone what to do but to show them because you're living it it's much more believable and seeing the results yeah must be so so what, what would you tell the women listening to do in their situation struggling not believing that they're capable of achieving results like you like oh this is just for the lucky people or those that can get results and I've tried it all and I have all this stress and pressure and um whatever is in my way what would you say to those women at that stage look I think the very very first thing before diet and exercise and you know going to the gym is really have a have a serious honest discussion with yourself and start by taking all the responsibility for why you are the way you are and where you sit in the world. Stop blaming other people for the bad things that are happening to you. Stop um, outsourcing blame to people and take accountability for your actions because once you do that, you point yourself in the right direction to change and you take back control of your life, yeah? As long as you are blaming people for all these things, then only their actions can change your life. It's as simple as that. They might be to blame for why you don't have enough money to go to the gym or why you overeat or why you're too depressed to go to the gym. That might be the case, but you need to take accountability for what you do now. That's in the past. If you want a future, if you want to see a future with optimal health, which will result in optimal happiness, which will result in you being a better mother, a better friend, a better partner, whatever, you are the only one that can do that. And you have to engineer your life. And I mean, create, like I said, a safety net for you for people that don't want the best for you because they'll they'll be there and they will try they if they don't want the best for you then they won't be supportive and you need an action plan to deal with these people do you understand what I mean yes yes yeah exactly. yeah I, I made a video and I was on the way to the gym and I had a fight with my ex and I was going I had a fight and I cried and I was so upset that's it. I'm not going to the gym. Mm. And then I sat in my car and I thought this could be the start of the end. There's always a start to the end and there's always a beginning for us at the start as well. And I thought, okay, you don't want to go, man. And I was really upset. I mean, I was in tears. Just drive to the car park, go to the car park of the gym and see how you feel. I drove there, watch the video again. Just go in and go on the treadmill. Don't worry about weights. Just go in and go on the treadmill. That's what I mean. Make the safety net. No, if this happens, what's your plan? You know, maybe don't go to the gym. That's okay, but that can't be the that can't be the end of it. You need to protect yourself. You need to have a plan for dealing with these external things because a lot of the time, and that was my situation, they were the things that tore it apart yeah you know what I mean oh yeah yeah we yeah. could we get we could get sidetracked and it's very easily and 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 especially when that's been what we've allowed so like you're saying taking that ownership owning that 
this is what I want. And it, it is up to nobody else except me. Nobody else. I mean, yeah. I can get motivation. I could get support. I could get accountability. That's all said and good. But until I make that decision that no matter what happens, because crap's going to happen, we're going to have bad days. We're going to have bad situations. What am I going to do anyway? Yeah, that's right. And mm -hmm. I look at it more is not what motivates you, what demotivates you. Oh, yeah. Dress, arguments, um, depression, anxiety. You know what I mean? It's yeah. those, um, and I'm not calling them weaknesses. There's those little, little spots that mm -hmm. need to be dealt with. You knowing yourself, self awareness is the first step forward. Get to know yourself, get to know your triggers and get to know what demotivates you. Because if you know what demotivates you, you can create a plan for when that happens. Yeah? 100%. Yes, have a yeah. plan. Know what, know what can happen and have a plan of action to continue. Yeah. I mean, we've all lived, lived mm. walked this earth long enough that we've built up enough data. Yeah, for sure. You know what I mean? Oh, to, we to know. know. <laughs> yeah, we, we know ourselves. And that's... That sort of circles back to that beautiful, honest yeah. conversation. And I don't mean, oh, yeah, I mean really get down to it, really be honest because this is this decision, could this will change your life. Yeah. It will change your life. And what's more important than, you know, someone's life? We can't, we don't, we don't get another crack at it. No. And like you mentioned, it's, it's, that's powerful enough, but then that's the legacy, what we're leaving and what, what impact we're leaving. Uh, yeah. Is it going to, is it going to help others? Is it going to give those that hope to someone else that's watching? And I know your story has, I mean, I know for me, I, I'm just, I'm entranced with it. It's just, it's so, it's powerful um, the way you share. And I know that that, that is definitely inspiring many women. If, if, you know, that's the case for me, I have no doubt. So, yeah, yeah, I think, I think, I think it is. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. Sure would not doubt it. And I and I am again, I just so so honored to hear your story. And I want to end off with one more question because yes. so far, Billy, looking forward now from where you are today, all that you've accomplished, all that you've lived through and survived and persevered and, and conquered, what is that next challenge goal? Where do you see yourself in the next year, five, 10 years from now? Who is Billy at that point? What if she accomplished then? Um, I would like to, I, th I think I'll start some online coaching. I think I would be really good at that. And that, that would, I think, evoke a, an enormous amount of meaning for me, um, is, is helping people. Um, and you know, the thing is when you, when you start to care about yourself and you start to get healthy, there's an, there's a inevitable chain, beautiful chain reaction. Well, this is what's happened with me. It's kind of like that pay it forward. I feel overwhelmed with wanting to help people and, and to be kind to people. And the more people that are nasty to me online and, and I hate me, I was saying to my partner today, the more it makes me want to be kinder. Yeah. Um, you know what, you know, there's nothing more that's my absolute baseline. That's my that's my threshold is is kindness, and you can't go wrong. And it sounds cheesy, but that's exactly how I feel. And it's and that's yeah. I think online coaching would be um, super beneficial to um, and rewarding as a career. So that and keep doing what I'm doing, inspiring. Um, look, I, maybe even write a book. Like I think there's mm. some. You know, some really great content there that would also be helpful. Um, I don't know. Just keep doing what I'm doing and pushing the boundaries, like pushing pushing what people believe um, older people, particularly women, can and can't do. I ignored everything everyone said to me. You know, you can't lose your belly, your menopause belly. You can't have a flat tummy after a C-section. You're going to need supplements and you're going to need this and you won't be able to do this and can't get rid of your cellulite. I just ignored everybody and just pushed on forward. And I can do that. You know what I mean? Who knows what you can do? I'm just not. I'm just listening to me and my body. And um, and I think I think this is just the beginning. I think I'm going to be able to do crazy stuff 
I have no doubt. <laughs> I know, <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> Your energy is infectious. Your story is powerful. And I love that you're Thank paying you. it forward. You're paying it forward, just sharing the message. So I can only imagine taking it and, and actually working with with people that that need you and uh, out of kindness. I love that. I love that. That's a good way to put it. People that need me. I like that. Yeah. So yeah. ladies, you're going to have to go and check her content out. If Billy doesn't mind, I will drop her her link in the show notes so you can go and find her page and, and stalk her like I did. But it's, it's very motivating. It's very inspiring. Thank you, kind lady. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. And I appreciate your time and your share here. Is there any final thoughts, anything else you want to share before we finalize? Yeah, this? I, I thought of one more thing. When you start on your wellness journey, when you made that pivotal, important decision, keep it simple as possible. Try not to get overwhelmed with all the information. You know, there's so much information overload. And I think a lot of people have the best intentions, but they crumble because they're just overwhelmed. Simple, simple steps. Literally get up and walk down the street. Next day, walk to the next house. Next day, just keep it simple until, you know, you start to see some results and then you'll be able to make better decisions for yourself don't you know don't go out and buy all the new stuff and get all the supplements and listen to every single person just go quietly into your wellness journey simply calmly and progress every day and just see what happens it'll be you'll astonish yourself in a year or so main thing be patient with yourself and kind love it i love it Done. Thank you so much for your time. Beautiful woman, no your, your energy, your heart, your, your passion. It just shows. So thank uh, you so much for yes. having me. Of course. And there you have it guys proof. It's never too late to start and it just starts with you. So, and be better than ever. That is the <laughs> truth. Better than ever. That's what I love. Better than so, ever. All right, guys. Thanks for your time. Thanks for watching. See you next time.